and welcome. This is one of my 60 conversations for my 60th year on this amazing planet. Um, and I think uh, Angelina and I, yeah, this is the lovely Angelina who I've got with me. And Angelina and I, I think I've just frightened her to death about how we're going to do this conversation. <laughs> I've just said, say whatever you like, do whatever you like. So who knows where today's conversation is going to go. But Angelina, would you like to introduce yourself and tell people just a little bit about you? Because I don't know you terribly well, but uh, you came to my conference recently and I I think I'm safe to say this is mutual. We kind of fell in love a little bit. And it was like... <laughs> just a little. A little. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely had a, a really beautiful connection and it's really lovely to continue that connection so I would yeah I want to find out more about you okay um well oh, where to start there's so much <laughs> no I am I'm a full-time mom of three beautiful children um my oldest son is 14 my daughter is 12 almost 13 and my youngest will be 10 next week so my daughter has a really rare syndrome called Pitt Hopkins syndrome I think there's about 3,000 in the world with the diagnosis. Wow. And I am her full-time carer. So she has a severe intellectual disability. She's non-verbal, wheelchair user. And all her care needs are provided um, for her by myself and her dad. So I was a policewoman here in Ireland. Should say I'm Irish. I think the accent might give it away. I live. I was going to say people coast. might have worked. <laughs> yeah, might have worked that one out. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> sort of obvious. So I live on the west coast of Ireland in a beautiful place called Galway, and I was a policewoman for twenty years. And and I left five years ago. I suppose, in traditional terms, you know, I would have put it down that I was burnt out. The caring role was very full on. And, and of course, in my infinite wisdom, I chose to work full time after Zoe was born, not realizing that that was maybe one, two ball too many. I was tickling in the air. But anyway, so I did. I I left my job and I was very, very lost at the time. And I had spent all of my 20s, all of my 30s, so over 20 years in therapy to fix myself. I was very broken, Deb. Oh, um, very broken. And approximately four years ago, I came across the principles, not through my daughter, but through our youngest son. So one of the things I've learned is, for me, I seem to have just went on talking past the introduction. Is that okay? It's perfectly fine. <laughs> There's no, you can't break any rules because we haven't got any. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do rules. <laughs> Me neither. So, so I suppose what, what, what I've learned is expectation is the ruination of peace of mind. <laughs> so when we decided to get pregnant on the third, it was, you know, we're going to get a lovely, bouncing, darling baby. And we knew he was going to be a boy, you know, to make up for the grief of Zoe and all the suffering I had went through. Um, and all the dreams I had had with Zoe that went down the wind out the window. And that is not what we got. <laughs> we got a beautiful son who presses all my buttons, the <laughs> ones I know about, the ones I don't know about, and then some. So we act we actually ended up looking for professional help during COVID for him. And I met a beautiful occupational therapist who took one look at him and went, well, you know, he is who he is. But mommy has a rather lot of thinking about <laughs> said son. And Neve, I could say very slowly and gently introduced me to the principles. But the way it looks to me, looking back, it's, you know, those fair, when you go to the fairground and you have to hit a, with a hammer, you hit a bell and it goes up and if it rings, you win a prize. Well, I'm convinced my head was on that and she was hammering me until eventually my head hit the bell and I had a <laughs> dawning realisation. And because of her, because of me, my whole life has changed. Wow. Um, I, I don't see my kids in the light I saw them in as they're all problems and they also need to be fixed no more than myself. Um, 
and and I suppose my my big the easiest way for me to describe the transformation is probably what I shared at your conference. And that was for nine and a half years, I looked at Zoe as being disabled. I looked at her as lacking. I looked at her as being limited. I looked at that her life was tiny. And as a result, so was mine. And there were so many things we couldn't do and places we couldn't go. And my life was destroyed. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a very big word to use, but I just felt, is this it? Life is shit. How did I end up with a child with a range of disabilities? And I couldn't see past that. And since coming across Sydney Banks and the Three Principles, I can see beyond Zoe's body because I now know that not just Zoe, all of us, there's something so much more to us than just our physical bodies. Mm -hmm. And I now see the possibility. I see the potential. And, and I look at her and, and for somebody I looked at with pity, I now look at her and go, oh my God, if only the rest of us had just a tiny bit of that. <laughs> I mean, she is the definition of unconditional love. She is the definition of living in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, the blessing that she does never thinks about the past and there's nothing on the future. She's right here now mm -hmm. in this moment. And actually recently she had a bit of a vomiting bug. And somebody said to me, oh, is she really distressed? You know, a vomiting bug, child, severe intellectual disability. How do you explain it? And when I reflected on it, I was like, oh my God, when she's puking, she's very perplexed. Yeah. Because she's no idea what's going on. But then when it's over, she's back clapping her hands and watching her TV program and, and that's it. Yeah. And she's not going back on what did I eat today? Oh, that must have been gone on. Oh, that was disgusting. I'm never eating that again. There's nothing. She has nothing on it. Mm. And I'm like, wow, wow. For all of us to have a bit of that. And I recently, we're wonderful people here in Ireland. We maybe it's people around the world. Somebody sympathized with me because I had a daughter in a wheelchair. He didn't even meet Zoe, he didn't meet the wheelchair. He just met the wheelchair van and he sympathized with me. And I laughed. I mean, what else do you do then? But laugh. <laughs> and and what, what, what I actually said was, if you had the level of peace of mind that my daughter has, you would be a really fortunate person. And I think I think I walked away and he, he looked at me perplexed as if to say, what the bloody hell is she on about? And so he lives in the moment all of the time. And so he has never been angry, frustrated, fed up, anything about the fact that she can't walk. Zoe doesn't look at other people with envy or jealousy. Zoe doesn't point the finger and go, it was your fault, mommy. It was your fault, daddy. It was my fault. It was God's fault. Nothing. Instead, Zoe celebrates the life she has. She celebrates everybody around her. And she loves her two brothers and she loves her cousins. And she now wants to be in the thick of whatever they're doing. And they're running and she's crawling really slowly and clumsily behind them. She doesn't care. <laughs> she doesn't care. And she'll sit in her wheelchair and she'll watch them on the trampoline or on the swings. And she'll clap her hands and squeal with delight and joy. And I suppose what I try to do nowadays is I squeal with delight and joy too. <laughs> what else is there to do in this lifetime? Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 I love that. I love that. I love that. It's so beautiful, isn't it? When we see, when we see past that stuff and we all, we all have it, don't we? And it's this, um, and what, what a beautiful, beautiful gift that she has given to you to allow you to see past that. And yeah, this whole, if we could just move into that level of trust in life in one sense in spite of who Zoe is she's just like yeah totally trust this life thing it's all <laughs> and yeah we have so much judgment 
don't we, about who we should be, who other people should be, blah, 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 the level of judgment. Like that's what, when you were speaking, that's what I was really hearing. But she just doesn't have judgment on it. It's just, yeah, this is what it is. Cool. Let's get on with it then. <laughs> I don't even think she thinks about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she just, she lives her best life every single day. And, you know, one of the things I learned is she makes a range, a cacophony of sounds. Um, and sometimes I describe it that she squawks like a crow. And what I've realized in the last while is she's talking. She's telling us stuff. Yeah. We may not understand it. Mm. And for her, that's not a problem either. She still tells us. <laughs> and she, she natters away all the time. And it's like, wow. And all she wants is for one of us to sit beside her and let her tell us whatever story she's telling. Mm. And, and I think we can do that for ourselves and for each other too. We don't have to have anything on it. We can just be in that space and be in that moment. And you're right and about the judging. And, and what I have learned from me and, and my circumstances is the judgment was always about me. I always judged me. Um, I had a really crappy narrative going on in my head all the time criticizing me. And, you know, I, as I said, I went to therapy for 20 odd years. And in, in the year or two before I came across the principles, I said to hubby more than once, do you think that something really serious happened to me as a kid? And I've just blocked it out. Because <laughs> I'm really, really, excuse my language, but I was I'm really fucked up. Like you couldn't be possibly as fucked up as me unless something really bad happened. Do, do, do you think I've suppressed it? And then I came across the principles and went, oh my God, I've just made all of it up, all of it. The pain, the anguish, the suffering, the struggle, the criticism, the judgment of myself, the self-loathing. I just made it all up, Tibbs. And I would tell you that I am not a creator and I cannot create. <laughs> I did a really powerful job of negativity and nonsense pure and utter nonsense and and I am I live in deep gratitude that Sid Banks had an enlightened moment and that he shared it and and that there's so many teachers like yourself in this world sharing this understanding if for another oh no other reason it took me off the hook of suffering mm. and and there's so much freedom in that and and there's so much lightness in that and and there's just so much more delight and joy and you know, so I was talking to somebody at the weekend and they said to me I'm here for you to fix me I swear I nearly fell off the couch laughing I was like I can't fix what's not broken I was like it's not possible and she was drinking out of a glass and I says do you see the glass there and she goes yeah and I says that's fully formed and whole she goes yeah I says well I can't fix that because that's not broken and she was like yeah, I know you can't fix that. And I says, well, I can't fix you either because you're not broken. Um, and, and for me, that was a wonderful realisation to come across. And, and Zoe just, I think she's the embodiment of that because I saw broken in her because her body didn't work the way I thought it should work. Yeah. Not the way she thought it should work, the way I thought it should work. Mm. I thought it was her brain was broken, her body was broken, um, and it's not, none of it is broken. Um, and as, as I said, she lives her best life every day and it's just, it's so wonderful to watch. And she is my constant reminder when I get caught up and when I think, you know, everything's going pear shaped. When I look at her, when I think of Zoe, I'm like, nah, everything's all right. We are always all right no matter what the external is whether it's wrinkles whether it's weight whether it's an illness whether it's chronic pain underneath all of us we are actually are we are okay the essence of who we are yes these bodies may not function the way we want them to function 
<laughs> they can be a bit crazy at times. <laughs> yes, they can be. Yes, they can be. And actually the word cranky comes to mind. The body can be a bit cranky sometimes. And that's all right too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, 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 I, I love the sharing of you absolutely not seeing Zoe as broken anymore because it is like like you I had a narrative running for years and years and years which was a whole load of stuff that I had made up <laughs> and with that made up nonsense that meant who I was being in the world how I was showing up what my relationships were like and all of that like yeah it, it was reflecting back to me broken rubbish you know this isn't right you need to be different these people need to be different this needs blah 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 a whole host of things that needed to be different and what I really really love is when we see when we have that moment for ourselves and see something it is <sighs> It it really it really does totally change what you are looking at. You see that thing differently, and I know for me one of the things when I came across the principles, it was like, if this is just another coping mechanism, because I you know there was all sorts of stuff going on in my life and it, very very different to yours, but all sorts of stuff going on, and I'd had therapy and had counselling and stuff, and was given you know breathing techniques and how you cope when this situation happens and I'm not saying you know that that is there it has its place but what I could see was <clears throat> the underlying message of that was yeah you're right that this is broken but there are ways that you can deal with that it will never really be okay but there's ways that you can deal with that and what I what really changed for me and what I love is that just went totally out the window. It's just like, no, that's the bit that's not true. The underlying, what the principles point to is nothing is broken and everything is okay. And sometimes it might look as if things are broken and that's your the, the way you're looking at it. And if you can look at it, and it's not even like you say, when our bodies are being cranky or something isn't right, we can have moments of looking at it and thinking, yeah, this isn't right. But it's like, oh yeah, I'm just having one of those moments again. But underpinning this, and the moment I lean into and connect with that, no matter what is going on, you 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 just feel into that and you come back to that place of peace. Like you say, that peace of mind within you. Gosh, it's not like I thought it was. And I know for me, if the principles, when I first came across it, it was like, right, if this isn't, um, I think it was Judy, uh, Judy Sedgman that said, if this is about it being turtles all the way down, it's kind of like, if there is a place where this, where this stops, <laughs> like with, and your daughter, that's what I'm saying, she's a beautiful example of that. And what you've seen, if it was kind of like, yeah, 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 I see everything's okay. But actually, do you know, have you met my daughter? She has got this problem. And she, <laughs> and for me, it is the seeing when people are in front of me, and they like your friend that you're describing, I'm here for you to fix me, when they eventually see, oh yeah, there's nothing to be fixed. That's the, that's the moment that we, we step into that peace of mind. And once we have really seen it, yeah, we go away from it again. We, you know, well, I do, I can only speak to myself. You know, there are moments when I'm kind of like, peace of mind, what, <laughs> with what's going on? I don't think so. And it's like, oh yeah, here I go again. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think that's what it is to be human. Mm. So when I came across the principles first, and I got caught up in my thinking, I used to judge it. It's like, yeah. you know, so, so the criticism remained, the judgment remained for a long time. And for me, I think the key is deep listening. I, I think that's the point where. I did a deep listening retreat last year and something fundamentally changed. It was like that penny really dropped that time for me. And what I do now is as, as much as possible, there's no halo on my head. There will never be a halo on my head. And my children will always remind <laughs> me of that. They are a great example of, you know, my nine-year-old just go to me. Now, mommy, you're in a bad mood. You're giving out to me. You know, it's just clouds passing through the sky. And I'm like, oh, please don't rabbit back at me what I've been saying. 
So my kids will always remind me and they will always keep it real for me. And still what has happened for me is that I suppose two things. Now I believe that we are spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, I didn't understand. But what do you mean you're fundamentally okay? And I think it's that part. It, it's that we are spiritual. Um, and I know some people are uncomfortable that, with that word. That's the word I use. And I trust that part of me today. So, so many things have happened, including this conversation, because you reached out to me and the nudge was, do it, Angelina, see where it takes you. So in the past, I was a control freak, Debs, control freak, OCD, everything had a place. And just before we started recording this, we had a conversation about how untidy my kitchen table is. I mean, <laughs> there are Lego men, <laughs> there is office stuff, <laughs> there is a robot, there's a cup of coffee, there's photographs, and there's even a cushion without the cover on it. This was not me five years ago mm. because those toys would all be in a specific place that they had been assigned to by me the minute they arrived in the house. Mm. Office stuff would be in the office and not just thrown in the office. Everything was neat and tidy. And, and I was obsessed with because I, I tried to control my outside world. Because in here was frantic. Yes, yes, yeah. In here was continuously frantic. And I had hamsters and hamster wheels. And one was going this way and one was going this way. And the little shits were reproducing at a rate of knots. <laughs> so I had families and extended families of hamsters all running around crazily in my head. And I genuinely believed it's out here. It, yeah. this, this is what's affecting me. Yeah. And my that husband was a problem. My kids, sorry for cutting across your desk. No, 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 no. I'm just saying it's hope. Absolutely. It's like, it looks like if out, we cannot be okay if out here isn't different. Yeah. I so had that experience, yeah. <laughs> and what happened was it all escalated. Mm -hmm. And by the time I left my job, it was that yeah. that was actually the problem because my house couldn't be clean enough. My mm -hmm. house couldn't be tidy enough. And I couldn't keep my kids locked in presses. See, many that's against the law, I think. So I, I couldn't keep them in one spot. Yeah. You know, they were running around the place and wrecking the joint, as boys do. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, what was happening at that stage for me was I was spiraling out of control completely. And I thought I was in control. I genuinely thought this was the way to control everything. So... Listening deeply to myself has helped me listen beyond the noise. And amazingly, when the noise is definitely much quieter in my head, there may be only one or two hamsters now and they're not reproducing. They must be like me, the foot and age where that's done and dusted. <laughs> <laughs> and and when, when they begin to crank up, I can see it much, much quicker and I catch it much quicker today. And I've heard other people say this down to the years and go, oh, what the bloody hell are they talking about? So I actually can't believe it's actually coming out of my mouth. <laughs> but to get back to the spiritual side of things, I can hear that now. So when you said, let's do one of these, I went, yes. And I had no thinking about it. I may have spent three or four minutes fussing before we got online. And that was it. In the past, I would have spent three days trying to decide what to wear or look at the state of my hair. It's a mess. Oh, I've no makeup on, da, 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 da. And I would go on and on and on and on. And by the time I would get online, you'd be like, I don't want to do an interview with her because she's, <laughs> she's nuts. Um, and and that's, that's what has changed for me. I listen to the nudges. I don't only really listen. I follow them. So even your conference last year, so as you know, Lucy and I did a talk last year in Spain together. And when Lucy and I connected, I actually don't know, did she mention the conference or whether I found out about it when I started following her online? And I had an instant draw to it, instantly. 
And I paid back whilst we were in Spain <laughs> for your conference in North Devon. I had no idea how to get there. I knew none of the logistics. And sometime in January, I was sort of like, okay, you know, Angelina, it's time to start to sort out like book a flight. I didn't even know what airport I was to fly into. <laughs> and knew, knew absolutely none of it. And that's the way my life is now. Whereas in the past, I would have, everything worked out mm. beforehand and guess what would have happened i probably wouldn't have went because it would have seemed like too much like it was a two-hour drive from where i live to the airport it was two hours at the airport it was a 45 minute flight and then it was a two-hour drive down to the conference i'd be like no for 45 minute flight i'm not doing that whereas nowadays it was like well you know what wisdom nudged you to go just get off your backside and go and I find life much easier. I find life, yeah, just easier and more easeful. And I don't have the thinking and the control thinking and all of that on it anymore. And I rocked up to your conference and it was absolutely brilliant. It was magnificent. And you asked me to speak on stage. And this is, this is the weirdest thing ever. I got insights from my own talk on stage. <laughs> That's, I was like, okay, so that's just though. crazy. No, that's the gift of this though, isn't it? And I, I, I want to go back to something that you said, because I think there was really, really something in there that was just like sort of a passing comment, but that um, that you were nudged to do, to do this and you followed that nudge. And if you like your, your head, the normal thinking was like, do you know, there's two hours here, 45 minutes here, two hours, then I'll go to, how the hell does this work? And I know for me, what I'm really playing around with is I, I heard Sydney Banks talk about this as um, two frames of reference. The, the human, like we are, we are spiritual beings who are born into this human experience and we learn to be human. You know, we're totally gorgeous little spiritual beings and then we learn to be human. We learn a frame of reference of how it is, how we interact with each other and how this human world works. And what Sydney Banks woke up to was the spiritual frame of reference, this other frame, what he called the second frame of reference, which was available to us, which on the face of it, when we first look at it, looks as if it's going to be more difficult. But in actual fact, when we follow those nudges, it is amazing what comes from that. And that was a perfect example of it when you were sort of saying, well, in the past, I would have looked at this. There's all this to do, all this stuff that I've got to sort out. Well, that's just too difficult. I've got way too many plates to spin, balls to keep in the air, stuff to do. You know, I'm, I'm already too busy to do to do all of that nonsense. And I've, I've got to hold on to this. And what those nudges, what I've seen, what those nudges invite you to do is like, OK, just put your plates down here. Doesn't even matter if you stack them neatly, just put your plates here, put your balls wherever they drop. That's all good, all good. And just follow this nudge and let's see. And all of these things that seem like huge, great barriers in our way, they turn out to be beautiful lessons, lovely time to spend with ourselves. They turn out to be something that we might have not thought we wanted, but something we needed in some way or another. Maybe we they are things we want, maybe they are, but in, they just turn out to be gifts in some way or other. And what unfolds from them, and yet when we look, I mean, listening to you talk about control, it's just, it, it really, really is hilarious, isn't it? That we think that we can control in that way. And very much this second frame of reference, to me what it is, is no, the way life works is you are nudged and you follow, you're nudged and you follow. Because when you just take even a minute to kind of think, even to have this conversation, just say, I don't know, a year ago, I didn't even know that you existed in the world. You didn't know I existed in the world. <laughs> and no idea about your story, who you were. You had no idea who I was. So if I'm thinking, right, on March the 21st, I want to have a conversation with Angelina. So how am I going to orchestrate that? It's like, you just you can't and I can see that like with with the business that I run and the stuff that I do it's like yeah I want to create a conference I want these people in the room and then when I go into my head and I think 
I, you know, I look at the people I know and look at who I think should come and be in the room. <laughs> and then I start to try and control those people <laughs> to be at my conference or, or whatever it is. And it's like, it's freaking mad. We're bonkers. And yet if we are literally just, okay, we had that beautiful connection at the conference. I thought Angelina would make somebody great to speak to. Let's just reach out. I have nothing riding on what comes from this. I, it's an inspirational conversation. I am sure there are people who are going to listen to this and have insights and, and get something. But it's like, but I'm not, okay, so let's check who they are. Let's find out who they are so that I can make sure they then. <laughs> it's like, it's just madness, isn't it? It's just like, no just follow those nudges and the way that I describe my life now with this it's like I play at offices you know a little bit like you I'm here in my office with my little rubber and my little my board rubber and my thing and my little um this is another rubber and then what else have I got you know I've got I've got some really pretty pens I've got this one that does all sorts of colors yeah so I play at offices (laughs) and then Follow those nudges and and you know what? Our business has gone up a notch since it's just been right, yeah. Just play at offices. And when that is, do you know what? I'm bored of playing offices now. Shall we do something completely different for a little bit? Whereas before, like you said, it would have been this. No, no. When when you are someone who runs a business, you are at your desk from this hour till this hour. And you don't. And if there isn't enough to do, you're doing something wrong. It's just we're mad, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what I love? All the erasers you have for the rubbers in your room. Obviously, you can just rub it all out and start from scratch anytime you want it. It's totally made up. Everything we do. And yeah. even when you look at things like you said, you were a policewoman before. And it's like somebody made that up. Like we look at it now and think that that is a, a real thing in the real world that has. And it's like, yeah, but at some point that was just an idea in someone's head and they made it. And I can see, you know, our conference didn't exist. I don't know how many, we've been doing it a few years, but you know, there was a time that didn't exist. There was a time, none of this business that we are doing, absolutely none of it existed. And we made it up. It's like, wow. And like you say, very often, so many of us, we believe that we're not creative. If anyone is watching this and going, yeah, but I'm not creative. Just, yeah, I love it. (laughs) Me too, me too. (laughs) Well, just look at your life, look at all the things. And I can't believe when I look at that, like since the conference, I see um, on Facebook, you know, people that I wasn't connected to before the conference. I didn't really know very well, didn't know who they were. And then I see posts they're putting out and see people that they didn't potentially, that they've only connected with since the conference, interacting and things coming from that. And it's just so beautiful to see the ripple effect of how we as human beings, we're just continually creating And then this idea of control, it's almost like, right, I want to, there were, there were around about 60 people in the, in the room. So can you imagine if I'm like, right, so I want to make sure that all of these 60 people are connecting with the people I think they should be connecting with, writing the posts or sharing, (laughs) but that's what it, that's what we do, isn't it? It is. And and I think I think with me, that's what I thought I would do with my children. Mm. They're going to live per my made up rules. Yes. And I think when my youngest came into my life, he went, I'm going to do it my way, mama. (laughs) And he has been my greatest teacher that way. Then I can make it up any way I want, including when he comes home from school and has homework to do. He does homework his way if he chooses to do his homework. And, you know, I remember Neve saying to me about homework. She goes, well, you know, that's a contract between the teacher and the pupil. It's nothing to do with you as the parent. But again, a made up rule told me that it was all about me. You know, and and it's just, I think kids is really where you see it. They make it up as they go and they change 
their rooms. Yeah. And they, they change, change their lives. The they do regularly. How very I mean, they? <laughs> one month he's eating potatoes every day. The next month he looks at a potato and tells me he's never eating one again. I'm like, so yes, and that's open to us. And, you know, I, I said earlier that my life was small or I thought my life was small and constricted when I had Zoe. And just as you were talking, I realized actually my, I constricted my own life and made my own life small okay. with with the level of thinking I had about how life should be. Yeah. Not the way it was, not the way it presented, but the way I thought it should be. And I created so much suffering within myself for so long because I just didn't accept what was in front of me you know what is is what isn't isn't and I tried to live in the isn't oh my god when I think about it it was just you know and, and I think that's the invite to us all to catch it I mean we all get caught up um but to catch those moments where we're in the isn't or we're trying to get into the isn't rather than the what the isness of what it is and going back to what you were saying about the the recognizing the, the spiritual nature of life you know yeah we are here having a human experience but our human experience is spiritual there's not you know we don't stop being spiritual because we're human beings because that's fundamentally who we are and it is the when we are actually looking at what is the truth of what is, is our spiritual nature. And that's what, you know, that's what you described. That's what you woke up to and saw in Zoe. That's what you woke up to and saw in yourself. And when we are actually that, that's what is. And then what isn't is the brokenness, the constrictedness, the, the amount that's going to restrict us. That's all the made up stuff. What is, is our spiritual nature, the truth. And we can never remove that from ourselves this uh, um to me it looks like this so if you, if you think of um a jug if you think of a jug and a jug is made of clay and it's like so we make this jug out of clay and we make it it's a pretty color it's beautiful it's a really nice jug and we call it a jug and we treat it as a jug and at some point we we, we stop thinking that it's clay but we can't if you were to remove the clay from it there wouldn't be a jug it will always, always be that clay. And just because we've stopped seeing it and stopped looking at it in that way or even being aware that there is clay there, it can't have gone anywhere. And it is like it's always there and it's always available. And to me, that's the same. We do get caught up and there is nothing wrong with getting caught up. But one of the things that I'm really, really seeing as well is that there is never a moment, however caught up we are, there is never a moment. Did you see that? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> There's something wrong. I'm not sure whether it's a Zoom problem or an, um, um, an Apple problem, but obviously it agrees with me. <laughs> totally. <laughs> the things, I had balloons just going up in the middle of my Zoom calls. But, I mean, you know, hands off, hadn't done anything. But anyway, it is like we cannot remove that and that. So however caught up we are, whatever it looks like, it, that is never, ever not available to us. Like that jug, if it if it thought, oh, am I clay again? In any moment, no matter what it's doing, if it stopped for a minute and asked itself the question, am I still clay? That would always be a yes, no matter what. And it is the same here. It's like however far away we think we are, however damaged we think we are, however broken, whatever, that what is which is our spiritual nature which is the clay of who we are that can't change and it looks like this whole you know these conversations the three principles everything we're involved in to me is just sort of saying to people do you know what you you can't not be that and if you if you are prepared to look in any way that makes sense to you if you are prepared to look you're gonna find it and one of the things I love with what I do is it doesn't matter how, you know, whatever somebody presents with, like if you'd have come to me in that lost state and said, yes, but my daughter is this and my son is this and this is going on and all, I would probably say, oh my gosh, yeah, 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 yeah. But the only thing that I know that I have is, yeah, 
all of that may be true you know whatever your jug looks like to you that may be true but what I do know is your jug is made of clay <laughs> and it can't not be and so you can point it doesn't matter what somebody presents with it doesn't matter what is going on and we all you know it, it's great to have these conversations and because I think sometimes it we can get this idea yeah I get that but if and fill in whatever it is, you know, a daughter in a wheelchair and abusive mm -hmm. relationship, whatever. But if, but it, it's not there. And it's like, yeah, we are still that, that our spiritual nature, that will always be what is. And I think our spiritual nature has always guided us. Oh. Even in the moments when we aren't aware. Yeah. And, and, I think sometimes it's to stop and look back and go, well, I made that decision or I did that. Where where did that come from? Like after Zoe was born, we were told that she was fine. So, so she was born and nobody noticed that there was anything amiss. Myself and my husband did ask, why does she look the way she looks? And she started this horrific screaming thing that was really, really, really distressing for her and for anybody who experienced it. And we were home from hospital. And I remember she was my second child. We were home from hospital 24 hours and I started keeping a diary. Mm. Nobody told me to keep a diary. I didn't keep a diary on my first child. And, and I have no idea why I kept a diary on Zoe. Mm -hmm. Except that spirit guided me to keep a diary on Zoe. And, and I did. And within the first week of her life, I started looking at holistic remedies to do like bioresonance and bioenergy. And it doesn't really matter what they were. And again, I, I was guided to look in a different direction. And, and, and not, not, not so much as the clue that I have. One random day when she was three months old, hubby came in from work and I met him at the door crying and went, I can't do this. There's something seriously wrong with this kid. I said, I'm going for a shower, have her bag packed. We're going to A&E. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I insisted that specific evening we go to A&E. And we went to A&E and it wasn't the most pleasant of experiences. So he was admitted into hospital overnight. I was told that I wasn't feeding her properly. And, and that's all irrelevant because that day, a developmental physiotherapist came to see Zoe. And you know what? She was like an angel. She was a really tall, thin woman with a big head of gray white hair. And it was like a halo. And she came in and she was the person who said to me, I hear you, Angelina. I see something in Zoe's face. And it was really, um, she was the first person, I suppose, who saw something. And I have been shouting for three months, there's something not right here. And as I said, she may not have been working another day. I didn't plan to meet her that day. I have no idea why it was that night we went into the hospital with Zoe. None. And I just think I was guided through all of that. And, and I had a really tough experience. And I had so much thinking and so much guilt that I carried a baby for nine months who came out of my womb and was not the perfect bouncing baby that we expect babies to be. And so what I'm saying is, is that spirit is always with us and has always guided us whether whether we acknowledge it or not whether we've seen it or not it's there so you're right it's a fundamental part of us that is always there it's the truth of who we are and it also guides us all the time yeah absolutely absolutely and all this conversation is is acknowledging that i guess and leaning into that more because you know you talked about struggles and a difficult experience and to me what I see since I have come across the principles you know life still does life I've got three grown-up children two grandchildren other grandchildren on the way you know a, a business stuff there's plenty of stuff going on which throws things up you know it, it does life does that and life continues to be life 
But from leaning into that guidance more and more and more, what I've seen is, yeah, if I try to do this, you know, all, all of that description of the control, if I try to do this, it just gets more and more and more difficult and I get burnt out. Whereas if I just write, OK, let's just play at offices, let's play at parenting, let's play at, you know, whatever, at building a house, whatever it is I'm doing, let's just play at that and follow those nudges, not be so rigid in the idea and find that balance about when is it my moment? Like you came on this call, when is my moment to show up? It's not like we don't do anything. It's not like we just sit and contemplate our navel all day. You know, <laughs> you've got <laughs> children that need, it, it's not that. But there is a balance here between when we lean into spirit, when we lean into our spiritual nature, whatever it is, it's like, yeah, we are right. Yeah, you're up. You're up. This is, you know, show up, do this, talk here, whatever it is. And following those nudges and following that guidance, we do. There is definitely a part for us to play in this life, but it is not keeping every plate in the air, juggling every ball that comes, controlling. We're not here to control life. We're here to live it and enjoy it. Yes. And, what, and what's lovely about it is that it's not on me. <laughs> it's not on me. There's such a sense of just relief. It's like, yeah, whatever happens today, happens today. Yeah. Do you know? And 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 you're right. And Sid Banks has said this, life is a contact sport. Of course it is. I mean, <laughs> There's illnesses, there's injuries, people die, people move away. I mean, relationships get fractured. Yes, of course, all of that happens. Um, and when we've something else to lean on, yeah, it just makes it that little bit easier. It's not all on us. And I spent so many years thinking it's all on me. Yeah, it's all about me. It's all about me. So I think when we take me out of the equation, it, it's so much easier. It is so much easier. Yeah. And and I think, yeah, that that's it, isn't it? That's the key. When we take ourselves out of the equation and just lean into this spiritual nature that is who we truly are, something truly magical Yes. Angelina, that was gorgeous. I knew it would be. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I know at the conference you said, I'm not a coach and I don't do this, but if people do want to reach out to you, is can they? Is that I know you run retreats and um you know you you run groups in Ireland. Is it you know, if people did want to contact you, can they do that? F F Facebook at the moment because I, I haven't put myself out there but I am on Facebook and yes I am very willing if anybody wants to have a chat about anything at all I love to chat and <laughs> yeah absolutely so you will find me under Angelina Hines on Facebook and yes I am running two retreats at the moment uh next month perfecting deep listening because deep listening is my thing um we have Jack Pansky and Sheila Massand coming over for a weekend in County Antrim and then in a weekend in County Galway. Um, and we do actually, we actually have a website because the wonderful Caroline is, is my partner in crime for this one. So she's done all that techie stuff that I have no idea. I'm waiting for my sons to grow up and get oh, into IT. They can do, yes. Yeah, they can do it for me. It's oh. not happening though. Again, oh. one of those things I try to control, not happening. Oh. But um, there is there is a website on the deep listening. It's um, deepliseningretreatsireland.com. Okay. And you'll find it on my Facebook page as well, if anybody's cool. interested. Cool. Okay. And I'm sure even if people are listening to this after those retreats have happened, I'm sure you're going to be doing more things in the future anyway. So yes. have a sneaky. Yes. I think so. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, we're getting at the moment, we are getting the Irish Three Principles community off the ground as well. Um, it has been a passion of mine for quite a while because I suppose for the first while I just floated aimlessly. Um, in, in three principles on my own and I and I know you said this as well Debs staying in the conversation is 
to me, very, very important yeah. to deepen our understandings. And, and as a reminder, to, to, to remember the essence of who we are and, and remember that this is our playground. Life is a playground. Let's play. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So I will put some of that information underneath this video. But um, yeah, let's so I've really, really enjoyed our connection today. That has just been such a fun conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me, Debs. It was a real pleasure to be here.